giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now is able to create content thanks to viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Welcome to the Inspire NC CAD Challenge Green Generation broadcast on First Updates Now. I'm Aviram, and our producer is the editor-in-chief fun, editor in chief of fun, Tyler Olds. Our CAD Challenge is bigger than ever with over 100 participants competing and 42 FRC robots that will be judged on today's stream. With seven days to create robots in CAD to face the unique game challenge, Green Generation, some submissions will leave you with awe while others may not shine as bright. What's important is that all teams are improving their CAD skills to prepare for the next season of competition. Before we get started, just a brief introduction of who we are. Inspire NC is a student-run nonprofit organization from Cary, North Carolina, and our goal is to promote STEAM, STEAM education to the community. We also run our own FIRST teams. 6908 Infused and FTC Team 16967. Back in March, at the start of COVID-19, we decided that we wanted, a, we wanted a way to get students working together and building their skills even while stuck inside. So with the help of members from FRC 6908, 6908 and FRC 900, we ran our first CAD challenge with a handful of teams in North Carolina. This time around, we decided to make it a bit bigger. So we reached out to as many of the FIRST community as we could. And on that note, I'd like to give a, a I'd like to give a quick shout out to our sponsors and supporters who made this event possible. First, for, and, for to Andy Mark for supplying us with the prizes for this competition, to Dassault Systems for supplying us with the CAD network for students that wanted to use SolidWorks, for First North Carolina for helping us for helping us promote this event throughout North Carolina, First Updates Now for helping us stream with this event and FRC Team 900 and 6908 for helping us run this event. And now with that, let's quickly introduce our game, Green Generation. This game has two main pieces, pollutants, which are tennis balls, and scrubbers, which are green 4-inch compliant wheels. Pollutants are to be scored by teams into the generator above each aligned station wall, while scrubbers are to be scored in the filters. Each completed filter prevents balls from leaking out from your alliance's generator. Pollutants are dumped out onto the field from the central water tower to begin the match. Alliances can also scale the water tower during endgame for bonus points. Before we get to the robot, let's introduce our judges. With us today, we have Animesh from FRC Team 5905, Parker from Team 3332, Claudius, Claudius from Team 604, and myself, Aviram from Team FRC 5190. Thank you to Rahul from... FRC Team 1885 and Abhinav from FRC Team 7461 for helping out with the judging as well. Thank you to all our judges for taking time to make to make this happen. So let's quickly break down what the CAD challenge is and how the judging will take place. To start, the CAD challenge is open to anyone who wants to hone in their CAD challenges. Teams had one week to design a robot uh, to play our custom design game, Green Generation, along with submitting supporting documents for their designs. Teams robots were based off based off a of standardized rubric in strategic design, innovative design, aesthetics, CAD quality, and feasibility. Now let's talk about how the show will be laid out. Places from 42 to 11 will be shown on screen with one judge providing feedback for each robot. And then the top 10 will be shown on screen with all judges providing feedback for each robot. Before starting the judges, we'd like to start our first giveaway. We will be giving away an IND Mark GOAT. Special thank you to Andy Mark for these prizes. This giveaway will be drawn right after we announce our 32nd ranked robot. Here's Tyler to explain the terms of this giveaway. Yeah, of course, uh, if you're watching our previous stream, more awesome stuff from Andy Mark. More goats. Why not? Goats, goats, goats. Uh, so with that said, our keyword uh, for this is going to be 
uh, Inspire NC. Inspire NC, one word, by the way. So please type in Inspire NC in the chat. That's your opportunity to win. Don't forget, you do need to be following the channel in order to be eligible to win. And if you do choose to subscribe or, hey, if you're lucky enough to get a free sub from uh, Connor gifting those out, you'll get five times chance to win. So good luck to everybody. Thanks to Annie Mark uh, for sponsoring the giveaway. And uh, once again, if you win, please reach out to us so we can get you that shipped out to you. Good luck, everybody. We have a lot of great robots, so let's jump right into our judging. Parker, start us off with Team 5868. This robot was more of a Crayola CAD layout sketch kind of thing. I think they could have benefited from using a parts library because every single part in here is hand catted, including the bolts and spark maxes. They're a pollutant only robot, which means they miss out on the climb and scrubber RP, which are very important for seating high. And all the motors are direct drive one to one. A gear reduction is necessary to have functional mechanisms. And on that note, let's move on to 6952. This robot is a pollutant shooter with a large intake and a tall shooter capable of storing pollutants. Although this robot, um, although this, I can see where the design for the robot's going, there's a lot of missing details in the CAD models. I believe that the feeder design could work a bit better if there were mechanism wheels used on the outer, on the outer parts of the shaft of the feeder. It would also be more effective if we had a separate and larger shooter wheel on the top of the feeder to help speed up the scoring of pollutants. Uh, let's move on to team 7539, Elevate. Claudia, okay. start us off. Uh, team 7539 had a very unique robot. They used topology optimization on their intake and shooter plates to maximize the structural integrity and minimize the weight. I really like their West Coast drive. It was very clean and well laid out with good detail. One note of improvement uh, is that their climber was missing a hook uh, to effectively hang onto the ring. Our next robot is Team 5940, Fred. Team 5940 had a really well built and detailed elevator, which they used for climbing and moving their scrubber mechanism up and down. They also had a unique flex fuel shooter, which I hadn't seen in any of the other submissions and a V-indexer powered by two Neo 550 motors. Our and then on that note, let's move on to rank 38, team 8101, Funk. This team went with a strategy to complete all the components of the game. In order to reduce the overall complexity, complexity of the robot, they ended up placing their scrubber and climber mechanism on the same elevator. For the pollutant portion of the robot, they have a full width intake that feeds into a die rotor. This die rotor allows them to quickly serialize their pollutants before they are shot through their sh shot out of their shooter. The shooter is extremely interesting with an adjustable hood that allows them to have 60 degrees of, ad of adjustment, allowing them to shoot from various locations on the field. All right, let's move on to team nine. 9,940, bread. Team 9,940 had another pretty unique and interesting robot. They had a dual turret system with a dual turret and tower set up with detailed shooters on both of the turrets. To feed this, they had a hot dog roller hopper that would store the pollutants they collected to their over the bumper intake and split the pollutants into the two streams to feed the two shooters. With this design, I think they can maximize the times they score uh, and minimize the time it takes to score them. All right, let's, let's now next, move on. All right, next, no, let's five. move on to rank 36. Team 60, six, 616, subduction with the robot Milo. This robot is a pollutant shooter robot and a climber bot. The highlights of this bot are that it has a swerve drive for easy maneuvering and it shoots through its wide elevator with an uneven four bar full width intake for, to, to take in pollutants. One important aspect of the robot for this robot is the climber. I believe that if this robot were to compete, the hooks will survive the climb. Some of the submissions that we got in this competition had a simple hook on the bot without, the, without necessary structural support to hang safely. So I feel that this is one of the better hooks that we got in the overall competition. However, I feel that the elevator on this robot can use a bit more work. 
there are some current interferences in the current elevator setup with the bottom elevator gearbox, and it's quite unclear as to how their elevator is rigged. But on that note, let's move on to rank 35. Team uh, 1068, Liquid Cheese. Liquid Cheese focuses on scoring pollutants in the match before climbing during endgame. To accomplish this goal, they have a full width intake that feeds into a dual flywheel shooter. This shooter is set up similar to the ones often seen in 2020, with the two wheels having a differing linear speed on their surfaces in order to ensure that the ball retains some amount of backspin. Additionally, even though that their strategy prioritizes pollutants and climbing, they still have a scrubber mechanism, something that will give them a large amount of adjustability during qualification matches. Coming in in rank 34, we have team 568, Nerds of the North. Parker, you're muted. Parker. This robot had a very creative scrubber mechanism on their elevator. However, the elevator and the intake were lacking a lot of detail and really didn't have any fasteners on the superstructure. I did, however, like the whole ball path, and I think it would have worked effectively in real life. Take us to rank 33, Claudius. Rank, 33's ro uh, rank 33 was team 3624, the Thunder Colts. Rank team 3624 had a unique triple stacked vertical hopper that allowed him to hold all 30 balls in a really small amount of space. It was the only one I've seen out of all the robots to be judged. Uh, they fed this with a vectored intake wheel indirect indexer mechanism that intaked from the cutout between their bumpers. They also used smoked polycarp in the construction to conceal a lot of the uh, indexer mechanisms and the hopper. All right, coming in in rank 32, we have team 7042, Polyrobotics, with their robot, the EPA. Their robot is a fast pollutant shooter with scrubber capabilities. The highlights of this bot is that they have a double wheel shooter for faster cycle times, and they have a robust climbing mechanism. One interesting robot that I saw right when I opened the CAD file is that they had they had end caps on all of their one by ones, and I feel that's a great safety feature that more teams should use in the future. And also, looking at their shooter, I feel that they have a bit more room to improve. The limelight sensor on their shooter seems to be at a low angle, and I felt that if you made the angle a bit more steeper, you could see the, sh the targets a bit better. And also, the way the, the shooter gearbox is made, it makes it quite hard to access Falcon motors in, in need if they need to be replaced or of sort. With rank 32 out of the way, let's quickly announce our giveaway winner. Yeah, once again, the uh, keyword for that was Inspire NC, and that's your opportunity to win the uh, Animark Goat. This is the last Animark Goat. Then we got another giveaway uh, to do after this as well, too, so make sure you stick around. Winner of this is going to be uh, Pratikma. Congratulations. Uh, you are following, so that means you are eligible to win. So congrats on that. Please make sure you reach out to First Updates now, either on Twitch or on Discord, so we can get that shipped out to you. We need your info so we can send it to Animark, and then they can ship it out to you. Uh, congrats on that. More giveaways to come. And uh, thanks again to Animark for the sweet giveaways. All right, now let's quickly move over to rank 31. Claudius, take us away. Muted, muted, muted. Rank 31 was Team 5114, the Engineers. Team 5114 had a relatively simple bot, but it was done very well and it had very detailed mechanisms. They had a multi-purpose pollutant and scrubber intake feeding into their simple yet effective gravity hopper that stored the pollutants and, defeat, and fed them into the shooter by serializing them with vector intake wheels. The climber used a large spring and a detachable hook with a winch to lift the robot and climb onto the uh, above the ground. All right, coming in in rank 29. Oh, did I skip a rank? Oh, coming in in rank 30. Take us away, uh, Annie, team 507. Yeah, 507 chose to only be able to score pollutants and climb in order to maximize the amount of points that they would attempt to score during a qualification match. 
All of this was done through a full width intake that feeds into a V indexer. The sides of the V indexer are independently powered by Versa Planetaries, a theme on this robot. Overall, there's a large amount of COTS gearboxes, something that I extremely appreciate as it reduces the overall complexity of the design by using commercial off-the-shelf products. All right, now moving on to rank 29, we have team 207, Abracadabra, with their robot Levitation. This robot, unlike the others, decide, decided to go with a decided to go with an elevator to score their scrubber to score both their scrubber to score both their scrubbers and their pollutants. One thing that I like that this team decided to do is reduce the use of pneumatics completely and have only uh, motors and electrical solenoids on their robot. I also think that their scrubber mechanism is quite creative and unique in the comment in the competition. Their scrubber mechanism works by collecting scrubbers in a funnel attached to their elevator and then scoring it using an electrical solenoid. One way I think they can improve this design is to add a circular disc on the stroke of their on the stroke of their solenoid to increase the contact surface between the solenoid and the scrubber. Parker, take us away with team nine ninety six thirty four. This is a pollutant only robot, which obviously means it misses out on the climb and scrubber ranking points that are very important to seating high. However, it's a detailed CAD, and most of the systems would work pretty well. Their intake and hopper had pretty large dead zones that would make that would effectively reduce their ball carrying capacity. The electronics are also very hard to access, hidden under the hopper. And coming in in rank 27, we have team 7461. Annie, take us away. Team Sushi Squad created a robot with a beautiful color scheme that could accomplish all the tasks of the game. Using, using the Andy Mark linear motion kit on their elevator, they integrated a scrubber mechanism and climbing into one elevator. For pollutants, they use a non-parallel four bar deployment linkage for an intake that then feeds into a concave hopper that is uses gravity to feed the pollutants into the shooter. And then in rank 26, we have team 1466, the web caddies. 1466 decided to primarily focus on scoring the scrubber mechanism. With a strong server powered clamp linkage, you can be sure that once they grab onto a scrubber, they will not drop it. With a strong A-frame construction, this robot is extremely rigid and I have no doubts that it could easily survive several competitions. Furthermore, 1466 has an extremely nifty tilting elevator where they tilt all three stages in order to ensure that they can easily score and pick up scrubbers. All right, coming in in rank 25, we have team 3902, Murphy's Law. This robot skips scrubbers, which are an important part of the game. However, they do have a climb, so I think they would have ranked reasonably well. There's some issues with their implementation of the ball path, especially the mounting of all the systems. The hopper and shooter especially are simply placed onto the belly pan. Like many of the other robots, the swerve doesn't add much to the design, and I think it could have just reduced failure points and went with a West Coast drive. All right, now let's talk about our second giveaway. We'll be giving away two four-inch green AndyMark compliant wheels. Special thank you to AndyMark for providing us with these for providing us with these prizes. This giveaway will be drawn right after we announce our fifth fifteenth ranked bot. Here's Tyler to explain the terms of this giveaway. Yeah, once again, if you're just tuning in in order to win uh, the wheels, we're actually giving away, I think, two of these uh, on here. Uh, so with that said, the keyword is going to be scrubber, S-C-R-U. B B E R uh, scrubber. Once again, it's a keyword for that. You do need to be following the channel and don't forget subs do get five X luck. So good luck everybody with that. And uh, keep watching these incredible robots here on inspire NC cat challenge. All right. And coming in rank 24, we have team 1259 after shift. Claudius. Uh, team 1259 was a priority scrubber by they had a really fast and robust elevator and a ground capable scrubber mechanism which would benefit them uh, when playing the game and picking scrubbers off the ground they also had a very 
OCG due to having most of the snaps on the glide, keeping the robot stable when they place scrubbers high up on the filter. All right, and on that note, let's move on to rank 23, Team Electron. The design process of this robot seems to have prioritized the ball path with a very creative intake that implements several new ideas I haven't seen before. I'm very confident that their ball path would be effective, but less so in the climber and scrubber mech. The scrubber mech is fully passive, and the climb appears to have a separate winch that would put weird side loads into the elevator. All right, Annie, tell us more about rank 22, team 9500. Nine, uh, Team 9500 could easily be characterized by their vast use of 80-20 in the construction of the robot. One interesting thing about their scrubber mechanism is that at the end of their five-stage elevator, they have a linear slide, allowing them to easily control the positioning of their scrubber mech. With a well-detailed CAD and the solid st strategic analysis of this team, with a bit more work into the making sure that their bot is structurally sound throughout the competition, this could be a very strong robot. All right, and then in rank 21, we have team 4761, the, ro the, robo the Robokits, with their bot Pneumonia. This robot was a low pollutant shooter with their innovative scrubber mechanism, with their innovative scrubber mechanism. The highlights of this bot are that they have a low to ground pollutant shooter and they have a large four bar, large four bar mechanism to pick up scrubbers and and their climber is also attached to this as well. This one thing that I find in, that one thing that I really appreciated in this robot was that they decided to use a flipped gearbox design for their drivetrain. This helped out their team significantly by giving them by giving them a lot more breathing room to design the rest of their mechs within. However, I think that the climber mechanism on this robot is interfering with a lot of the other mechanisms on this robot. I think the team the team could have avoided this by moving the climber to different locations such as the back part of the robot. And on that note, let's move on to rank 20. Team 46920. Parker? This robot was a good robot, but I feel like they overreached by trying to implement a ball mechanism as well. The elevator and scrubber mechanisms were very good, but the intake and especially the hopper to shooter transition don't really seem finished. I think they would have placed higher if they focused all their design effort on the scrubbers and the climb. All right, coming in in rank 19, we have team six, uh, 628, Yes Cringe. This robot was really cool. I love the aesthetic and they implemented several new ideas. However, their climber and scrubber mechs are absent, so I don't. they wouldn't have ranked high enough to get into the top 10. And their spinny storage for the balls, I don't really think it would work. But very cool robot overall. And coming in in rank 18, we have team 430, Redacted, with the robot Redacted. The they have beautiful renders in this, in this uh, w that they submitted to us. I was blown away with how small that they were able to package the drivetrain gearboxes in the robot. Another good example of Another good example of their amazing packaging is their elevator gearbox. I also think that their elevator CAD is very well detailed and I can tell that they plan and I can tell how exactly they planned out the rigging on this elevator. One thing that I'd like to see as an improvement on this robot is the climber mechanism. The hooks on this climber mechanism are t are slightly too far apart to have both hooks latch on to the to the ring properly. Moving the hooks uh, Further in three to five inches together sh should do the trick to work properly. And then in rank 17, we have team 2013 Beerheads with their bot Kaboob. When I graded this team, I was surprised to see how creative this team got with their naming scheme. Instead of giving just their robot a name, this team gave a name to all of their subsystems, most notably their hopper, Jimmy. The elevator is being, the elevator in this, um, robot is being run off of four identical gearboxes on the robot, which is each powered by a mini sim. The current design results in the mini sim motor interfering with the two by one bars of the robot. If the team had used Neo motors instead, I think they could have packaged the gearboxes better so that it didn't interfere with the drive frame. And then let's move on to rank 16, 
Se- team 7707, Sky High. I really like this robot. The scrubber and climb specialist seems to me like an effective strategy for building simple robots that win. However, the only reason it didn't rank higher was that the arm wasn't built up enough. This was a common thing against many robots that I judged, using a live axle arm made of half-inch hex that would break as soon as it hit a wall or a defender. But it's a very pretty robot. All right, coming in at rank 15, we have team 1126, Cyber Knights V3. Any this, take us away. This robot was an extremely unique robot. I think it's the only one that had a differential swerve in the entire competition. They used the new Neo 550 motors in order to ensure that their swerve was packaged effectively into the rest of their robot. For the rest of the robot, they used a sheet metal construction, which may be impossible to manufacture, but it looked very nice. Their color scheme was a nice purple and bronze, and it was extremely pleasing to the eyes. Regarding the actual quality of the CAD, it was extremely detailed with even items such as string being correctly modeled in the CAD and other basic details such as gussets and rivets obviously being present. All right, and with that, we're going to bring on our producer, Tyler, to announce the winner of our second giveaway. Yeah, once again, the uh, keyword uh, for this one to get in was scrubber. Why not? Scrubber was the keyword, and that's your opportunity to win the pair of compliant wheels from our friends at Animark. And the winner for this giveaway is going to be... One second, please. Uh, Shrey05. Shrey05, congratulations. You have won the giveaway. Uh, please, once again, reach out to First Updates Now here on Twitch or on Funds Discord uh, so we can get that out to you. Congratulations, and thanks again to Mark for these awesome giveaways, and congrats to all these teams so far. These are some absolutely incredible machines. Can't wait to see our top teams coming up here in just a moment. All right, coming in rank 14, we have Team 1823, Cactimus Prime. Take us away, Annie. Kectimus Prime strategic analysis led them to focus on playing defense against the opposing alliance for the majority of the match. In order to aid them in this goal, their robot Aluminum Falcon features a custom swerve that, give the, that gives them a large amount of maneuverability. After playing defense for the entirety of the match, they can climb at the last moment due to the quickness of the climb and large amount of tolerance for lining up. While currently, the hooks seem like they might not actually be able to grasp onto the rings, the hooks actually pivot together to clasp around the rings and then pull the robot up. And then coming in rank 13, we have team 6, 613, the Lost Programmer with the robot Vanguard. Claudia, stay goes away. Team 613 had a really solid uh, scrubber only bot. This is, I think this bot would be a great pick for any alliance in playoffs. Uh, they had a very simple and solid w, uh, West Coast drive with plenty of room for electronics and anything else that may need to be mounted. The elevator had a dual cable system, which is good for, for preventing large loads, uh, for preventing racking during large loads like climbing. They had one issue was with their climber hook, which could, which when the cli- robot climbed, could possibly have stresses on it that would bend the gussets holding it to the uh, top of the elevator. Overall, though, this is a simple, lightweight robot that I think would be really effective at playing the game. All right, that takes us to our ranked 12 team, Team 438, Poofy Bots. This do everything robot's defining feature is the combined turreted elevator and shooter. And while this is a very cool concept, I'm worried about the robustness and effectiveness of it. The main bearing and structure that it swivels on seems to be underbuilt, and it has a few issues like drivetrain ground clearance and the pollutant hopper. Obviously, I can't test prototypes for this, but I'm not confident that they would work in competition reliably. All right, bringing us to our rank 11 team, our last team before our top 10, Team Zero, with the robot Bro. This robot was just seen, this robot was designed to be a fast scrubber cycler with an effective four bar virtual scrubber intake. This was, out of all the submissions I looked at, this was one of the more detailed CAD models in, in terms of having all the fasteners in place and all the necessary electrical components. 
One thing that I think that this team could have done is reduce the size of their drive frame since they're planning on being a scrubber only bot. Before we go to our top 10, it's now time for us to announce the winner of a special prize. As a thank you to Andy Mark for graciously providing us with the prizes for this event, we'll be awarding Andy Mark, we'll be awarding the Andy Mark Award. This award was given to the team with the most Andy Mark products on their robot. The winner of this award is will win a four inch green compliant wheel known as a scrubber in green generation for each member of their team. This team utilized the Andy Mark KOP chassis and nine sport gearboxes, integrating them into an elegant and efficient design to take home the prize. Congrats to team 1466, the web caddies. And now to proceed to the top 10, where each of our judges will be proceeding, will be providing feedback on each robot. Now I'll start us off with team 1469 with their robot count ifs. First thing I want to say about this robot is their renders are beautiful. The one, me one mechanism I liked on this robot, especially was their intake mechanism. This intake mechanism had used uh, had used poly cards over timing belts, which although may not be as effective, help but helps reduce part count significantly. However, in this robot, I tended to see a, a ton of uh, a ton of minor interferences between the scrubber mechanism and the elevator. The elevator gearbox interferes with one of the plates on the feeder, and the sprockets on the arm seem to be seem to be touching each other by a, by a hair. Uh, Parker, give us your comments on this. I like this robot too. I think that it would have been, it would have performed very well in competition, especially the intake, which is a design I didn't see anywhere else in this competition. Ani, what do you think? I thought overall this was a great robot. It might be a, a bit tall, but for the type of, for the design choices that they took for the indexer and storing of the balls, that was basically a requirement. One thing I wasn't too sure about is that will the tennis balls be able to travel up the back of the aluminum two by one? But otherwise, it was a very solid bot. Uh, yes, yeah, so I thought the spot was really solid too. I really like their hopper and indexer system for uh, simplifying the, uh, for effectively getting the balls into the shooter. They had a long, tower leading up to the shooter, but I think it was well supported with the poly belts on either side so that I don't I don't think any balls would fall out on their way up there. All right, taking us to rank nine, we have team 1902 with their robot Smokehouse. This robot had some great renders to look at. We, re we received well over 40 renders from this team alone. The same quality of these renders translate translated well to their CAD models, specifically in the detail aspect of this robot. Almost all the fasteners that I could find were in the exact location they needed to be. Claudius, why don't you give us some more comments on this robot? Yeah, like Avi said, 1902 was one of the most detailed robots I judged in the Catathon. Everything was there under CAD, from every single bolt to even the radio Ethernet cable, all running all the way from the rover Rio to the radio on top of their they had amazing renders and a unique sheet metal and aluminum plate construction, which they used on their drivetrain and their elevator and their shooter tower. One of the mechanisms that stood out to me was their pollutant spindexer design feeding into their shooter. They had an over the bumper intake that would suck the pollutants up and put, toss them into the spindexer, where a Lexa and funnel would follow them into each individual slot so they could be picked up by their tower and brought to their shooter. They also have a dual speed elevator gearbox to allow for fast elevator movement during cycles, but also have enough torque for climbing and their and climbing with a buddy too. They had buddy climb forks. However, the, the piston mounting for the buddy climb forks and the mounting of the forks themselves, I don't think those could that could stand up to holding a robot when the robot climbed. And I feel like those would break. Another issue with the robot is they had a live axle arm Their scrubber would probably break when it hit when the robot it hit the filter if it was driving. Another part of their scrubber mechanism was they had a, a rev servo powered auto line system, but on a chain, which allows them to move side, side across the filter and place the scrubber into the correct hole. 
Uh, Ani, do you want to give us some more comments about 1902? Sure. 1902 for me, as previously mentioned, there's the linear slide mechanism, the linear slide mechanism on the scrubber mech, on the scrubber mech, which I really enjoyed because as someone whose rookie year was 2017, I really loved seeing teams that have that linear that that they can just move the game piece side to side without a swerve drivetrain. I always found that to be amazing. The particular implementation that 1902 did was especially nice because it avoided using options such as rev extrusion with the uh, sliders and instead just used box tubing and bearings, similar to an elevator. I think that this robot spent a lot of time on their aesthetics and not as much working out the few little kinks that they had left on the robot. For example, I'm not sure that their indexer would be able to handle if it intaked too many balls. And uh, their elevator has a few major interferences that wouldn't make it, that wouldn't let it function. All right, and on that note, let's move on to our rank A team, Team 10, Supernova, with their bot, Skyscraper. I like that this team decided to go with a smaller chassis in comparison to all the other teams. They made up for this smaller chassis size in the size with the size of their uh, ball tube feeder. Even though they had a tall tube shooter, they planned for this and maintained a low center of gravity. I like that they decided to have their shooter with the capability to shoot two balls at a time, but I think that their shooter would function a bit better with the plate separating both of the balls to prevent horizontal displacement. Parker, why don't you give us a couple of comments on what you think? I noticed that they had a lot of weight very far off the ground. I think this robot's five feet tall, which would really, which combined with the really short wheelbase would probably cause it to fall over quite a lot. Ani, what do you think? I think that going on to their scrubber mech particularly, I did like their use of a virtual four bar to ensure that their scrubber would stay parallel to the ground. However, I was unsure about some features that they included and whether it was valid, such as putting on two sets of gears to transmit the torque to the arm. Uh, Claudius? Yeah, so I like uh, this robot's Team 10's elevator. They had a, they had, it was very well mounted, their frame, and uh, it looked like it could sign, sustain the load of the robot climbing. Like uh, Ani mentioned with the scrubber mech, they had some, uh, I like the virtual four bar there too, and they had the two wheels on the outside to uh, direct the scrubber to the center flap where they could, uh, so they could pick up scrubbers uh, from around the range of the scrubber mechanism. And then in rank seven, we have team 7117. Take us away, Parker. I love this robot all around. The scrubber mech is cool with its top and bottom rollers that really increase its intaking range. They had good strategic analysis overall, and I was particularly impressed with the elevator. It has a chain tensioner and rope routing all perfectly modeled. The climber hook was very far back from their bumpers, which would cause them a little bit of issues climbing. And the ball path is really tight all the way through. I think that their ball path is one of the highlights of this robot too. Claudius, why don't you give us a few comments? Yeah, so like I said, the, like Parker said, this robot had a lot of detail. Uh, they had the they even modeled the uh, they modeled the ch the strings on their elevator and even the energy chain to route their wires up to the top. Uh, one thing about their ball path is they had the bumper cutout intake design, which would be pretty useful, uh, effective at picking up the pollutants off the uh, from out from the ground and uh, directing them to their shooter. Uh, Ani, do you want to give us some more insight in this robot? Sure. One thing that I really liked was their use of round tubing to support the elevator structure. I believe that the use of round tubing and tube nuts is an extremely good mechanical decision to do because it provides a lot of strength for not a lot of weight. Uh, going into their renders, I did appreciate the small detail that their RSL did in fact uh, have the appearance of a light in photo view. And overall, I had to say that I really liked their specific implementation of a scrubber mech. You can't really see it well in the renders, but it was an extremely effective way that I have no doubts would
be able to rigorously control the scrubber game piece. So l let me talk more on the scrubber mech. So this scrubber mech was controlled by four pistons and with two pistons on each roller. This roller, the each roller would be sandwiched together and then the scrubber would be picked up using that. If you if you look at the the left hand render on the second slide, you could see on the top on the top there's a there's a depiction of what this would look like. When the mechanism's not being used, the pistons will will retract the rollers into the robot and keep them away from the harm's way. In addition, they also use two different limelights on their robot, one on the front and one on the back. The limelight on the front wasn't as constrained as the limelight on the back and had freedom to move side to side. This introduces a chance for inaccurate pollutant scoring from time to time. And now let's move on to rank six, team 2733, pig mice. Parker? This robot scored very highly in innovation. I love their spiral hopper driven with brushes and their really cool hood angle adjustment. However, I'm not that confident in their pollutant intake. Teams that had a rigid scoop as part of their intake really impressed me. I'm a little bit, uh, yeah, I think they should have had more rollers so that there weren't as many dead zones in the intake. Ani, what do you think? One thing that I really liked about this robot was their uh, PTO off the shooter hood. Uh, not off the shooter hood. Their PTO off the motors that powered the shooter wheels itself in order to drive the elevator. I thought this was quite a nifty way. And even though the implementation might lead to some sheared, te sheared teeth over time or some bad CC, I think overall it was an extremely solid way to reduce motor count and make sure that you have less problems to deal with when on the field. What about you, Claudius? Uh, yeah, so I like this robot too. They had a really solid swerve, uh, a custom swerve with a Neo 550 for turning on an ultra planetary and a Neo for uh, the wheel for the drive. Another thing I liked about this robot was that they had extra inertia to the flywheel, which, which of which they used the WCP treaded wheels uh, to get a good grip on the pollutants to allow for them to empty the full 30 load of pollutants without losing too much inertia and, ha and uh, having a steady stream of pollutants going the whole time. All right, now we're getting close to our top five. Coming in in rank five, we have team 479, the Tendyman, with their bot, v Vaporwave. Claudius, why don't you tell us more about this bot? Team 479 had one of the best indexer and shooter setups out of all the bots I've saw. They have a unique bevel gear dry rotor hook with both passive and active power and active powered rollers to funnel the pollutants into the into their tower. Their tower, which is supported by two carbon fiber tubes, had belts on both sides to bring the pollutants up all the way to the shooter, which uh, on which they had an adjustable hood with a Neo 550 and a rack gear. They also, I love their use purple 3D printed parts, the box tubing, and the anodized plate for a sturdy and light construction. Their drivetrain also had some sheet metal parts, too. Uh, I also, their electronics placement on their drivetrain was really good, and I think that this would be a competitive bot uh, on the field. Uh, Parker, do you want to give us some of your comments on the robot? Uh, I really did like the die rotor hopper. I think that's a very effective way to deal with these tennis balls. And the way their hopper folds out really reminds me of 254. It's really cool. However, the elevator printed bearing blocks, I don't think those would hold up, especially with climb loads. Ani, who do you think? I'm going to reiterate what Parker said about the die rotor. I felt like this was one of the few, there were a lot of teams that attempted to do a die rotor, but this was one of the ones where I could see it working and it had the detail in CAD to make me confident that if someone showed me this on week one or week two, I would feel confident running it because of how fleshed out and detailed it is. Overall, it was a very solid execution of a concept that isn't the best, isn't, isn't the easiest to execute. Lastly, I also want to talk a little bit about the die rotor. Um, Although I think the die rotor is an amazing design that they came up with, 
I'm slightly concerned that the Neo 550 has an eighth of an inch ground clearance from the die rotor from the ground, and I think this can easily be rectified if they notice this earlier. Also, I think that the turret plate that they have on their robot is going to be slightly hard to machine because of all the small teeth that they have, and instead they should consider skipping teeth or splitting the gear up into smaller pieces to print it using onyx or nylon. And on that note, let's move to our rank four team. Team 187 surfs up. Annie, take us away. Yeah, so Team 187 robot hydrology features a nice change of pace from previous robots. Instead of using an elevator to score scrubber mechanism, 187 had a telescoping arm. This implementation uses constant force springs to extend the arm, when, and the arm is retracted through the use of a winch that is powered by Neo 550s. Uh, one thing I'd like to highlight is that they used a lot of billet parts to connect the 2x1 two the, two tubing on the robot together, which gives me a lot of confidence that the superstructure would be extremely rigid. However, the complexity of this telescoping arm did not stop them from properly addressing the other game piece, pollutants. They feature an intake that feeds into a V-indexer, which used the bell of the Neo 550 as an agitator, at allowing hydrology hydrology to shoot out all 30 pollutants through their two Neo shooter. Uh, Parker, uh, what did you like about this robot? I like the telescoping arm. That stood out as an innovative mechanism, even though I feel like I've seen it before. I would have liked to see a full width intake for the pollutants, but the pollutant path, the pollutant ball path is very simple and robust. I think it would work. Uh, Claudius, what do you think? Yeah, uh, like like people said before, the telescoping arm is one of the only ones I've seen in this competition. It's very unique and very creative. I would have never thought of thinking about using that to use scrubbers, uh, to score scrubbers. Uh, as Ani said before, they use the casing of the Neo 550 as an aggregator on their uh, pollutant intake, and I think that could be improved. Also, uh, they could. Uh, make their intake a little bigger and maybe uh, widen out their hopper to allow for uh, uh, intake of more pollutants at a time. Lastly, I'd also like to comment on their hopper with the Neo 550 in there. I think it's an in in interesting strategic design choice. I can't agree or design with, agree or disagree with it because I can't really confirm or deny if it would work without any prototyping. However, I also I was looking at the drivetrain closely, and I feel like one of the gears on the drivetrain won't hold up well since it's made out of aluminum and it's quite small. The AT&T aluminum gear on the drive gearbox should probably be used in the steel version so that it could hold up to the pressures of the drive gearbox. Uh, and on that note, let's move to our top three teams, starting off with Team 5172, the Gators. Claudius, why don't you tell us more? Sorry. So Team 5172 had a, is a really fast pollutant shooter robot. They had a really well packaged mechanisms and they had a buddy climb mechanism too, which I think would work and it was well supported. Uh, they had uh, they had a die rotor indexer with the bevel geared dual active rollers and a swerve drive uh, base to allow them to act, uh, uh, be agile on the field and effectively score game pieces where they need to. Uh, Ani, do you want to give us some more comments about this robot? Sure. So on the second page of the robot, you'll see there's a render that really shows off their superstructure. One thing that I wasn't the biggest fan of is you can see the large cuts that have been made to the, to the box tubing in order for packaging reasons. I don't think this is something that's going to severely interfere with the performance of the robot overall, but it is something that I would start to worry about after maybe two or three regionals, and you have to worry about how the robot's going to hold up at champs. Uh, Parker, your thoughts? This is another very effective pollutant scoring robot. I don't think pollutant scoring was the best strategy they could have chose, but they stuck with it and they executed it very well. I like their double climb as well. And lastly, I really like their shooter, and I think that their adjustable hood was an amazing design choice. 
However, for packaging reasons, I feel like they could have used an ultra planetary gearbox instead of a versa planetary gearbox to make it a bit more compact in that tight space. And also, some of the pocketing on the shooter is not that easy to machine without small bits due to due to tiny uh due to tiny machining bits. And on that note, let's move to our top to our rank two team, Team Five Seventy Six Wild White Pizza. Parker, take us away. This is an incredibly detailed CAD model. They had everything you could want except for a few wires, and I really like their uh, die rotor again. As you can tell, I like die rotors. The aesthetics were on point, and their intake seemed really effective, although I would have liked to see it have a wider range to intake from. They're also one of the few teams I saw that had a double climb that would actually work. Any, what do you think? Yeah, so I just wanted to touch on their uh, intake. Personally, in my opinion, I think that maybe the choice to have a uh, intake that's not a full width, I think it was justifiable because it shows that they understand what their limits as a CAD team is and how much they can expect to accomplish within one week. So I did like the fact that they didn't try to maybe overreach and try to package and force in a, a full width intake where it might not have been fully fleshed out and not been able to work completely. Other than that, as uh, Parker said, their buddy climb, yes, very nice. One of the few that I would have confidence in working. Uh, CTT, uh, what are your thoughts on this robot? Yeah, so uh, like uh, Ani mentioned, they really designed within their limits on this robot, and it kind of showed in the detail of the CAD and how everything was properly supported. Uh, the body climb in some of the previous robots, I wasn't so sure if it will be able to support the load of two robots. I was definitely sure that this body climb would be able to. And their intake leading to their hopper, uh, their die rotor, Hopper is, the ball pad is very clean, and I think this robot will be effectively able to score pollutants uh, in the game. Uh, All right. Do you want to give us some of your comments? Oh. Uh, uh, not too much, guys. You guys covered almost everything that I wanted to say, but this robot had a really nice sense of color scheme that, I, that was different from most other bots that I saw in the competition. So I feel that having a bit more variety is also quite nice from time to time. And now, let's move on to our long-awaited first place robot. And the, win uh, and the winner of this competition is Team 80 with their robot, bruh. No, with the, oh, no, my bad. With their robot, uh, shrug. Uh, Claudius, why don't you give us a couple of comments on what you think about this bot? Yeah, so Team 80 was another great example of a robot that was all around amazing. It uh, it had lots of detail. All the electronics were there. There was very there's just like two places where it was missing some rivets or missing a bolt. It had all the mechanisms were very very clean and well designed. I was this would be a robot that I would see making for the if the competition was happening in real life. Uh, the ball path going from the intake to the uh, elevator dumper was very, very clean. Uh, they had lots of belts, which was a nice positive. And uh, the discover mechanism uh, is very effective too. Uh, Ani, do you want to tell us your comments about this robot? Sure. One thing I loved about this robot is that they took a strategy and they executed beautifully on it. It might not be as complex as a die rotor, but the implementation of this robot was very clean and left no doubt that it would be able to successfully accomplish all the goals described in their scouting document. Uh, one thing I want to highlight again is the use of sandwiching a polycarb backplate on their scrubber mech in order to center the scrubbers, even though that their intake is very wide. Uh, Parker, your thoughts? I loved how he used timing belts all throughout the ball path, and I really love that he used a dumping style instead of a shooting style. This is the only robot I saw that did that, besides Isogrid Bucket, which wasn't submitted. It's very creative and very innovative. I think it would have done very well. All right, and on that note, we're getting close to, end getting close to the ending of the stream. 
Congratulations to Team 80 for winning the Inspire NC Catathon Green Generation, and thank you to everyone who has watched. This was another massive turnout, and we can't wait to be back in the winter with another one. Thank you to all of our judges for your time and dedication. Don't forget, if you want more FIRST Robotics in your, in your life, make sure that you hit that follow or subscribe button to fund on both Twitch and YouTube. On behalf of myself and the Inspire NC GDC committee, I'd like to thank all teams for their amazing CAD challenge creations and to everyone who's viewed or supported the CAD challenge. We will be sending in-depth feedback from our judges to the teams who submitted designs within the coming days. Thanks to Fun and our producer Tyler for their support and promotion of the stream. We'll see you this winter with another CAD challenge and be sure to subscribe for more content with first updates now. Talk to you then. See you guys. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.